uh, also known as African American History Month. Uh, again, the event grew out of Negro History Week, as previously indicated by Sister Arlene, uh, which was created in 1926 by Dr. Carter G. Woodson, a noted African American historian, scholar, educator, and publisher. Uh, it became a, a month-long celebration uh, in, in 1976, and since then, again, every U.S. president has officially designated the month of February as Black History Month. Again, other countries uh, around the world, including Canada and the United Kingdom, also devote a month to celebrating Black History Month. Um, I would like to briefly tell my story, uh, if I could. I, I promise not to bore you with decades and decades of my history, but uh, I did want to kind of touch on my story just a little bit, just to kind of provide some texture, if I, if I may. Uh, I was born and raised uh, in the Bronx, New York, uh, to the age of 10. Uh, then I moved uh, to Portland, Oregon. Uh, after my mother passed away, um, I moved in with my aunt uh, in Roanoke, Virginia, uh, where I graduated high school. Uh, upon graduating from high school, uh, I joined the U.S. Army uh, for three years. I was uh, stationed in Germany uh, for three years, uh, and upon returning home to the United States, um, I was, uh, began working in banking uh, and taking classes at the local community college. Uh, I was determined to succeed uh, and immediately made a personal, uh, immediately set personal and, and professional goals. Uh, goals are very important, as you well know. Uh, goals are important to, to have a game plan. Goals provide you with a blueprint, a roadmap. Without goals, you don't know where you're going. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Although the environment in which I was initially raised uh, would seemingly preclude individuals and individual success, however, uh, I was blessed with a strong, loving, uh, and insightful parent uh, that helped me, uh, that exposed me to uh, opportunities and possibilities uh, beyond my initial circumstances. Uh, my current situation, I believe, uh, is, a, is a testament to the notion uh, it's not where you're from, more importantly, where you're going. Uh, it's not what can be achieved, <clears throat> it's not what can be achieved uh, by, your, by your odds, but overcoming those odds. Uh, and I think that's, that's vitally important. Uh, you cannot let disadvantaged circumstances determine where you end up and where you go. Uh, I immediately focused on time management uh, and accounting, being accountable as well, uh, for just about every minute of my day. In addition, I began speaking to everyone I could everyone I could possibly think of uh, that could possibly help me fulfill my goals and fulfill my dreams. Uh, at that time, uh, my dad was my go-to uh, since he went back to school at age 40 uh, and completed his associate's, bachelor's, and then subsequently his master's degree, all while raising five children and having a wife. Uh, so my dad uh, was also an imam of the community. Uh, for those uh, who are listening, uh, who are, are non-Muslims, that's a, that's a Muslim pastor, uh, for those who are unaware. Uh, he was also a drug counselor by profession. Uh, he was also a public servant uh, and very involved in the community. Uh, and I recall him saying that I had no excuse, uh, I had no excuse to be successful, particularly when I had zero kids and no wife. <laughs> so having, I think, having a mentor uh, having a mentor, um, a confidant, a motivator uh, like my dad uh, helped me tremendously to navigate through the difficulties and challenges of life. I think it's critically important that you have someone that you could confide in, someone that supports your endeavors. Uh, he provided, I will say though, however, he provided tough love. He provided spiritual guidance, he provided wisdom, uh, and then of course he provided financial assistance as well. Uh, he told me, you get out of life what you put, you get out of life what you put into it. Uh, and chance favors the prepared mind. Uh, so preparation is the absolute key. And that's what he instilled in me. So through, through determination, uh, fortitude, uh, and God's grace, uh, I completed my bachelor's degree and my master's degree in business administration. In addition, I have been blessed to complete banking programs at the University of Virginia, uh, as well as Louisiana State University. I also started a real estate investment firm uh, and began buying, renovating, uh, and selling houses with the help of my real estate investing mentor, uh, Tony, Tony Mishura out of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, he helped me secure funding uh, for my first few projects uh, through a hard money lender. When I decided to invest in 
uh, real estate. I researched and read everything I can get my hands on. Um, I researched the industry and began to network with everyone I possibly could. My goals were, my goals were non-negotiable. Uh, and uh, many before me have sacrificed to make these opportunities available for me. So I took them very, very seriously. I lost my mother uh, to breast cancer at the age of 17. And I was determined to make her proud and become a productive citizen of society. Uh, it's important to find your motivator. Not just money. It's got to be deeper than a financial means. You've got to find something that motivates you and something that inspires you. Um, and if you have to drive for the right reasons, the money will follow. Sure enough, don't worry about that. Um, I was thinking today in regard to business that, you know, I'm a, I'm a walking economy. And you may ask, well, brother, how, how are you a walking economy? I said, well, my hairline is in recession. <laughs> but my stomach is always in inflation. And these two together bring me into a deep depression. <laughs> so just uh, a couple of takeaways that I'd like for you to think about uh, in regard to uh, my, my discussion with you today in regard to business success. I really, most of us are familiar with the attributes and what's required relative to business success. Uh, but I would like to, a couple of takeaways uh, in regard to this uh, particular endeavor. Uh, first of all, I think it's important that you set clear, uh, clear goals with defined timelines. Right. Uh, so if you, uh, when you set your goal, first of all, the goals should be to be very, very clear. You should have a, a vision, uh, and you should have a mission <clears throat> for your for your goals, uh, and your timeline should be definitive. In other words, it should be three months, six months, one year three years and five year timelines relative to your goals. What do you, what do you, what do you seek to accomplish within those time frames? Uh, make an unwavering commitment to your success. Begin to think, move, and act like the person you wish to be. It's otherwise known as the self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, learn to understand business financial statements. If you want to be a business owner, how can you be a business owner if you don't understand the basic financial statements? Uh, when I say basic financial statements, I'm referring to uh, a balance sheet, an income statement, a statement of cash flows, a statement of equity. What are the elements of each of those financial statements? How are they interrelated? If you want to be a business owner, you must trust but verify. If you don't watch over your money, someone else will. And yet they may not have your best interest at heart. So if you want to be a business owner, take, take the time to acclimate yourself and familiarize yourself with the various financial statements and the elements within them. Know your competition. Uh, what are others doing in your field? Read, another thing is to read, read motivational material. I started out, which I think was very, very instrumental uh, in terms of my mindset change. I started out reading a book called Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice by Dennis Kimbrough and Napoleon Hill, which is a spinoff of Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Black, uh, uh, Dennis Kimbrough is a uh, professor from Columbia University. And so he has black stories. Uh, just briefly, if I could, um, I did want to speak to a story within that book. It's called Acres of Diamonds. And the Acres of Diamonds is a story about a farmer who sought riches. And the farmer um, had uh, acres in which um, he actually sold the farm uh, and used that money to sought riches. He traveled the world looking for riches, subsequently exhausted all of his funds. Um, once he exhausted all of his funds, he dumped off a bridge and committed, committed suicide. Well. The individual who actually purchased his, home, or purchased his farm noticed a very rare, strange-looking rock. He began to investigate this rock because the rock looked very, very strange. And so upon further investigation, uh, that rock was a diamond in raw form. Come to find out, the entire farm was literally filled. The acres were literally filled with these diamonds. The whole time while he was looking externally outside for riches, he already had it in his possession. So before you, the moral of the story is before you go out looking uh, for, the, for, the, for the wealth that you seek, first look within. First look within what you already possess. Each and every one of us has strengths. Each and every one of us have skills. We have to hone in on those skills and capitalize on those skills. Um, your network, your network is your net worth. It's absolutely critical you expand your network. 
it's absolutely critical that you speak to the people within your industry and within your circle. It, not only that, expand your circle. As you begin to do that and, uh, and, and, and align with individuals of, of like-minded and, and align yourself with uh, uh, the people that you would like to aspire to be, that's going to increase your net worth. Uh, people also, another thing too, I think it's critically important uh, having uh, several years now in the business industry. People judge you based on how you dress, how you speak, and how you write. This is an, is an unfortunate occurrence, uh, but this is the society that we live in. And so take note on how you present yourself. Presentation is the absolute key. Uh, and so back to the self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So uh, I think one last uh, thing I will say in regard to business, um, now is a great time to start uh, a business and become successful. Why? Well, we have the best job market since the 1960s. Uh, money is circulating abundantly. Uh, the stock market is setting records daily. Uh, the U.S. has the strongest recovery in the G7 since the COVID shutdown. Some may ask, well, what is the G7? The G7 is the seven most powerful countries in the world. They include Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom, and then, of course, the U.S. being the most powerful of the ball. So for young people, uh, you can never be too young to dominate. Look at Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City Chiefs. 28 years old, top of the world, best quarterback in the world. You can never be too young to dominate. For those of us that are older, you can be older and still find your rhythm. It's never too late. Black history, I remind you, is American history. Let us honor and embrace our achievements, both, both past, present, and future. In conclusion, I came in peace and I leave in peace. And I send you off with the greeting. Assalamu alaikum. That is peace be unto you. All right, that's going to be a little hard to follow right there. <laughs> we just go ahead and shut down now. Everybody go home and have a good day. <laughs> Uh, we went a little out of order if you're looking at your program uh, due to the brother has uh, a time constraint issue. So we're going to get back towards the order uh, of the uh, events, of the uh, agenda. Um, so, right, the most important thing here is knowledge, right? And where we, do we get the knowledge? The knowledge is in books. You are not, the, the best way, the only way, the realest way to learn is to read a book. You can get the in-depth of everything in a book. You can watch a documentary, you can hear somebody talk, but if you read and you read, you can read on the same subject and you can go deeper and deeper into it. So as part of that, we have the, uh, the, the Blyden Library here who has been serving the community for 100 years. 100 years of the place that you can go get knowledge. Right? Books can be expensive, but they're free at the library for your library card. That's all you need. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie uh, called Goodwill Hunting, but there's a, a scene where they go back and forth. And basically, the guy at the end says, you spend $100,000 on an education that you could have got for $1.75 in late charges at the library. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so it's there. And if you can be autodidactic and learn how to teach or look at other places and they can show you the way, and then you can go find the knowledge. So we have a person here today uh, named Vincent Green who is going to represent the Blyden Library, explain the history of it, and what it's been providing to the community. But anything that provides books and knowledge is a benefit to the community, because that's where they hit, you know, as I don't have to tell anybody here, that is why people would forbid to read, forbidden to learn forbidden to have knowledge because knowledge is going to give power, right? You know, the story with Frederick Douglass when uh, his, I'm sorry, you know, master, mistress started teaching him to read and he was like, you got to stop that because he's going to be no use of me if he has knowledge and understanding. There's nothing we can do with him because he'll know too much and he'll have too much self-esteem. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Brother Vincent Greer to give you the history. I, the history of the Blind Library and, and, and what it provides to the community um, currently. So uh, we'll bring up Vincent Greer. Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, come on up. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Okay. <laughs> I would like to thank all of you for inviting me here into your sacred space. Um, it's an honor to be here. I am happy to be able to sh have the ability to share uh, a little bit of the Blyden Library's history uh, with you and encourage you all to come and get a library card if you don't already have one. Um, the Blyden Library is named after uh, William, uh, Will William Blyden. He is the first. Uh, he is the first. Uh, Secretary of State for the African Nation of Liberia, which a lot of people don't realize that the African Nation of Liberia has its roots here in Norfolk. Um, our ancestors had the ability to start an African nation, um, and our communities here try to keep that co uh, contact by naming institutions after people who were responsible for the creation of that nation. Um, what a lot of people don't realize about our library, which is a small branch library, is it is the actual first publicly funded African American library in the state of Virginia, which is um, important for a number of reasons. The first is um, the first is Virginia, as you all well know, is one of the first states that was responsible for anti-literacy laws. Um, which most of the slave holding states in the United States followed suit. It was the blueprint for anti-literacy for African Americans in the United States of America. So to go from a state where it was uh, forbidden to read and write under penalty of death to having a community that understood the importance of literacy to African American children then and now, leading into the future, um, they came together with the limited resources that they had and created this library in the mission, well, it was the formal mission college uh, building that was in Norfolk uh, after the Civil War when the Union caught the, um, captured Norfolk, uh, the Union started the first African-American school in the state, and from there, the Blyden Library was formed in the rooms of that uh, Mission College at the time, which evolved to end up becoming Booger T. Washington High School. Uh, um, and, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm uh, a little bit nervous. The library uh, has just kind of stood the test of time uh, up until today, where it's, uh, it's reached its 100 year anniversary, uh, and I'm responsible for planning the celebrations, which <laughs> they gave me the job to tell them, like, I, I know we're playing my own birthday, but <laughs> you home is playing an institution that's as significant as this uh, for the community, but you know, I know who I am. And I took up the challenge, and uh, I understood that this celebration has to be more than me. You know, most people tend to view the world from their perspective, but it takes leadership and strength to be able to see, uh, step outside of yourself and see the broader scheme of things. And that's how I ended up here in your mosque today, because I realized that those African Americans, when they say African Americans created this library, they didn't say Christian African Americans. They didn't say Muslim African Americans. They didn't say Jewish African Americans. They said African Americans. And in planning this celebration, I wanted to make sure I include the um, Islamic uh, faith, uh, the Islamic community. Uh, African American community here in Norfolk to take part of this because it would be uh, injustice to all of our ancestors to include any group because they don't necessarily align with how I was personally raised or how I personally see the world. Understand that, especially in today's uh, time, that we don't have the luxury of choosing who we want to advance the vision that those who came before us had. Um, I understand that uh, 
those books, you know.